importance of moral reformation, uh, a knowledge of self. For instance, if the average so-called Negro, he doesn't think that he can uh, go into business and provide jobs for himself. We've got to get smart. We've got to organize. And because of this, he thinks that he can only get a job from the white man, or he can only get clothes from the white man, or he can only get food from the white man. We've got to organize so effectively and so well. Taurus Black History Corner Hotel, which means peace, and we welcome you to Satora's Black History Corner Internet Program at All Points TV. I am your host, Catherine Hunter Williams, along with my co-host, Miss Catherine Blake. Hello, everybody. Sometimes you'll hear me call her Miss B, so you'll know who I'm talking about. It just cut off so quickly, John. I wasn't ready for it. Well, I try to fade it out, but it just it, the machine caught. The slider, then it caught when I slid it back. That's, that's what happened. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, moving forward, and we're going to pass it on. Today I'm going to tell you our story about a young woman whose name is Ayesha Thomas. She is the first adult black who to be who is has been cured of sickle cell anemia. Ah, that's very interesting. And Miss B is going to tell our story about the celebration of the 4th of July and what Frederick Douglass feels about it and she's going to tie it in to what's going on today. And at this point in time, I don't know if y'all know who Roscoe Brown is. Yes. Some of us do. Mm -hmm. Yes, some of us do. But these young folks, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't know what's going on. So we're going to take a moment because he passed um, July 2nd. He was 94 years old. Wow in Riverdale, New York. And, and while we're taking a moment uh, uh, to remember him, I'm going to give you some information about him, uh, our story. Roscoe Conkling, Conkling Brown Jr. was born March 9, 1922 in Washington, D.C. And he was one of the Tuskegee Airmen and a squadron commander of the 100 fighting fighter squadron of the 332nd fighter group. He graduated from the Tuskegee Flight School on March 12, 1944 as a member of Class 44C-S and served in the United States Army Air Forces in Europe during World War II. During this period, Captain Brown shot down <coughs> an advanced German ME-262 jet fighter and a FW-190 fighter. So, I, you know, I don't know a lot about planes, but he shot down those planes. Prior to his wartime service, he graduated from Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts, where he was a was valedictorian, valedictorian of the class of 1943. After the war, Captain Brown resumed his education, his doctor, doctoral dissertation, dissertation, <laughs> dissertation. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and was on an exercise uh, physiology, and he became a professor at New, at a New York University. University. Jesus. Okay, get it right. And directed the Institute of Afro American Affairs. On March 29, 2007, Brown attended a ceremony in the United States Capitol Rotunda, Rotunda, where he and the other Tuskegee Airmen collectively, not individually, were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in recognition of their service. He is also a member and past member of, of the 100 Black Men of America New York chapter and professor of urban education at the CUNY, C-U-N-Y, Graduate Center, Brown died, joined his ancestors on July 2nd, 2016, in Riverdale, New York. Wow. Just take a moment. The Tuskegee Airmen were uh, 
fighters that were, uh, they had their own planes and different things and they fought in World War II. Just take a moment just to remember who he is, Roscoe Brown of the Tuskegee Airmen. And if you want more information about them, just go to Tuskegee Airmen, just type it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got to move a little, uh, we took a moment and talked about him. Mm -hmm. That was our moment to remember the Tuskegee Airmen, who was some great uh, airmen, mm -hmm. uh, what they call them, pilot fighters, jet fighters. I um, met one uh, during Law Day here a few years ago. Uh, he was a uh, uh, lieutenant. Lieutenant Colonel Jefferson, Esker Jefferson. Esker for the last name was Jefferson. You need your earphones. Mm -hmm. Is his name Jefferson? Yes. Al yep. He was here. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you looking at me, he telling me I'm looking at. Can you hear it? But you're not. It's muffled, like you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I brought the Buffalo Soldiers here, mm -hmm. I brought them here a couple of times and then they kind of took them from me, police. They've been here all along. Mm -hmm. Then I brought them to Flint a couple of times over here at that park off of Bassett, off of uh, Dayton, over in mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. Bought them here a couple of times and next thing I know, uh, all of a sudden the police, the black police got interested in them and they took them. But anyway, Besides that, that's some stuff. I bought them here. And when I bought them here, the Tuskegee Airmen also came to. Mm -hmm. And they were here with the children. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that was way before your time, I think. Uh, I remember that. I remember... The Buffalo uh, Soldiers? Uh, yeah, because you brought them quite a few times. No, I, I, just a couple. Just a couple times? Because they snatched them from me right quick. Okay, I do it's remember like seeing them. When I bring them. certain people to the city of Flint, I was doing this through the museum at that point in time. Yeah. We had a, the uh, Museum of African Ancestry Research Center. And they gave me an opportunity to bring different people to the city of Flint. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was uh, it was such an awesome time. And it's, I, I met some awesome people during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I thing, wasn't helping you at the time. but Maybe I re that was that. that maybe yeah. Because I bought them here two years in a row. And they would have continued to come. But like I said, the police found out about them, and they came and snatched them, and they, they did, a, you know, they had more money than I did, mm -hmm. so they did parades and all that kind of stuff. But our thing was the children had the opportunity to sit and talk mm -hmm. with the Buffalo Soldiers, and that's what was so great about our program. Okay. Yeah, the interaction. Now let me move forward because we only got so much time. This I felt was very important, and you can get it off blackdoctor.org. And it's about a Chicago woman. Her name is Aisha Thomas. She is the first black adult to be cured of sickle cell disease with a chemotherapy free procedure at UI Hospital. Aisha Thomas had been in and out of hospitals battling sickle cell disease and as far as I know sickle cell anemia has always been a black person's disease mm -hmm. since she was only eight months old. This summer 33 year old Thomas became the first adult to be cured of sickle cell disease with a chemotherapy free procedure at the University of Illinois mm -hmm. Hospital of Health Science. That is amazing. System. That's amazing. Yeah. The university reported Thomas is one of 12 adult patients cured, 12 adult patients cured of sickle cell disease as part of a clinical trial at UI Health that used a unique procedure for stem cell transplantation oh. from healthy tissue matched with a, from a sibling donor. So ah. they had to take stem cells from a brother or sister. Right. Yeah. All right. It's a less harsh treatment. Stem cells transplants have been used for years as a means of possibly curing sickle cell disease. However, before the stem cell transplant could be completed, patients would have to endure a taxing course of drugs to kill the cancer cells, otherwise known as chemotherapy. I didn't know chemotherapy was cancer cells. Am I saying that right? 
Yes. No, okay. Let me read this again. However, before the stem cell transplant could be completed, patients would have to endure a taxing course of drugs to kill the cancer cells. Okay, otherwise known as chemotherapy. So the chemotherapy was killing the cancer cells. The more traditional form of stem cell transplant uses chemotherapy to destroy the patient's own bone marrow, which shuts down their immune system and make them vulnerable to infections. This new technique first developed and performed at the National Institute of Health campus in Maryland eliminates the need for chemotherapy to prepare the patient to receive the transplanted <coughs> cell and offer the prospect of cure for tens of thousands of adults suffering from sickle cell disease. Many of wow. them black Americans. So is that they said many of them black Americans, does that mean it's other races that also I don't know. Jobs yeah, they actually they're middle some Middle Eastern people actually have a problem with um sickle cell as well. Okay. Some like it might be an area like more northern Africa, northern Africa that comes over to Middle East. That's why I think I recall uh, hearing about one time. Okay. So that's like it's like a more widespread, but it's largely in the African American community. Community. Yes. Thank you, John. All right. So, like I said, if you want more information, go to blackdoctor.org and, and and read about this woman who was the, the, is the first adult cured of sickle cell disease. That's been a disease that we've known about for years. Yeah. I support sickle cell. Uh, I know some people that uh, I've been friends with for years that I support them because they have sickle cell. So this is something that's within our community, basically known mm -hmm. in our community. So just go to blackdoctor.org and read about her. Is that still in story. clinical trials or are they going to... Uh, say it's a cure now that they can help all, all of those. It says according to okay the first development performed the new technique first developed and performed at the National Institute of Health campus in Maryland as eliminates the need for chemotherapy so evidently it's out of the, of the clinical trial phase because it said finding from phase one slash two of the clinical trials are published online in the journal Biology of Blood and Marrow Transplant. Wow, that's so if they say that she's been cured, then there's a cure. Mm -hmm. They don't found a cure. And then it's more information, but do for time. I cannot read all mm -hmm. of it to you. Uh, but like I said, go to blackdoctor.org. This may be uh, something that can help you and your family. Uh, so facts fewer than 2,000, 200,000 U.S. cases per year can't be cured, but treatment may help. Mm -hmm. So this may be a great thing. It requires a medical diagnosis. Lab tests or imaging always required. Chronic can last for years or be lifelong. With sickle cell disease and inherited group of disorders, red blood cells contort into a sickle shape. If y'all know what a sickle is, we used to use these sickles mm -hmm. in high grass. And it's made like that. And you like a C. It. Letter C. Yeah. Uh, the cells die early, leaving a shortage of healthy <coughs> red blood cells and can block uh, blood flow, causing pain. And they do cause a lot of pain. Yes. Some of the people that I know would be in pain from it. Infections, pain, and fatigue are symptoms of sickle cell disease. Treatment includes medication, blood transfusion, and rarely a bone marrow transplant helps this condition. That's at blackdoctors.org. All right, Ms. Brown. I mean, Ms. B. <coughs> well, I'm calling you uh, Roscoe Brown. I'm looking at Roscoe Brown. Forgive me. Uh, well, uh, as you know, uh, the 4th of July just passed a few days ago, and, and there's been a lot of controversy about uh, should black people celebrate July 4th? Well, I, I went online to uh, check some things out, and there is a lot of conversation around it, and this is not the first time either. No, it's been going on it's for years. It's been going on for years. Uh, this says July 4th, 1776, while Americans were celebrating their independence, black people were still being beaten, raped, and tortured. 
While the bombs burst in the air, Africans would still be enslaved for almost 100 years. So I want to uh, read afterwards, to you. Afterwards, 100 years afterwards? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is uh, the words of Frederick Douglass. Is John in there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Independence Day, the 4th of July, these are his words. Certainly didn't free any slaves. What about Emancipation Day? When scenes like this show, people working so hard, their babies tagging along, note the little fellow, well that was a picture there, and say so thin. In 1882, Frederick Douglass, who himself had been enslaved, wrote, Though slavery was abolished, the wrongs of my people were not end, ended. Though they were slaves, they were not quite free. No man can be truly free whose liberty is dependent upon the thoughts, the feelings, and the actions of others, and who has, <clears throat> excuse me, himself no means in his own hands for guarding, protecting, defending, and maintaining that liberty. Black people could not do that. <clears throat> Yet the Negro after his emancipation was precisely in this state of destitution. He was free from the individual master, but the slave of society. He had neither money, property, nor friends. He was free from the old plantation, but he had nothing but the dusty road under his feet. He was free from the old quarter that once gave him shelter, but a slave to the rains of summer and the frost of the winter. He was in a word literally turned loose naked, hungry, and destitute to the open sky. Those are Frederick Douglass's words. Some of them? Some of them, yeah. The, is that from his speech, though? Yes, this is from his speech about the 4th of July in 1882. So this is, this is controversy that's been going on ever since then. Mm -hmm. So this is this is nothing new. And some black people do not celebrate the Fourth of July. Yeah, and I don't either. So I, it's uh, this speech came out the Fourth of July, but I, I want to just add this, where it says, "My business, if I have any." This is Frederick Douglass. Mm -hmm. Here today is with the present, the accepted time with God, and His cause is ever. Is the ever living now. Mm -hmm. Trust no future, however pleasant. Let the dead past bury its dead. Act, act in the living present. Heart within and God overhead. We have to do with the past only as we can make it useful to the present and to the future. Mm -hmm. To all inspiring motives, to noble deeds which can be gained from the past, we welcome. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. Mm -hmm. So you're going to tie this in. Mm -hmm. Historically, to right. Okay. Historically, when we wanted to be part of the American dream, they wouldn't let us. But when we rejected white America's ideology, they gave us decisiveness and reverse racism. So, it is implied the threat behind the bumper sticker that read, America, love it or leave it, is enough to beat most black folks into a psychological submission. One thing, the saddest part about the whole ordeal in the message about 4th of July is that we are sending our young black children uh, when we encourage them to celebrate Independence Day. Instead of teaching our children to think critically, we are forcing them to accept a blatantly false version of history without examining the facts. In other words, teach our children our own history, our story. How can we teach them the, the value to value education 
when the foundation of the United States educational system is based on a 200 year old lie that had a holiday formed around it. To teach young black children to celebrate Independence Day is intellectually criminal. Now who is that from? Is that Frederick Douglass? No, this is no, this is conversation. conversation. Okay. That's going around. Conversation that's floating with uh, other people on the internet, like all chat. over, okay. all over. But it's through the internet, right? Yeah, it's through the internet. Okay. And one thing about it is that you you must understand. I heard was he the mayor Giuliani of New York, mm -hmm. or is he the governor? What he Giuliani said. was the mayor. He's the mayor. He was the mayor of New York. Wasn't when, he the mayor, John? What yeah, he, he was in the, like up to the time of 2001 when the attacks happened. So. Of New yeah. York. Yeah, of New York, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well he's been saying some funky things. Some crazy he's, things. He's today. How, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Because, see, the, 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 this is coming into uh, the murder of our black people by are people that are supposed to protect us, that are supposed to support us, to be there for you in your corner, police our police. Police brutality, that's what you're saying? <laughs> is that what it is? Police brutality, uh, put it all police, out there. Yes. And it's escalating, and it's kind of scary. And then we have to, we have to talk to our children, especially our boys, how to respond when they're stopped by the police. Well, why in the world should we have to do that when white folks don't have to do that? But they need to do it too. Actually, I, not, actually no, white people there's don't more, get killed. Yes, like they do. Yes, do. they do. There's more whites killed each year by law enforcement than there is by blacks. That's the FBI points that out. It's in the it's all it's published. More whites get killed. It's quite a bit too. So it's you gonna have to show me that yeah, stat. Yeah, because I, I I can I can show it to you. So well, I got some stats too. Uh, there is a website, you can go on the web and you can check it out. They said that every 28 minutes, a black person is being shot or killed by a, a police officer. Last year, 315 people were killed by police officers. In 2014, 285 people. There, and the list goes on and on. Okay, so and, and this is, just clear this up for me. This is... Uh, we don't see this on video that you're talking about. There it's, are it's, videos, thank God. It I, is videos, but we and they showing some of us, some of it. I, okay, some of it they're not showing because if you're saying it's 315 black people being killed yearly. Okay. Um, by policemen. Yes, ma'am. There are several videos online that you can watch. And I'll send them to you because I've got I've got them, I've got them. I've uh, well, I think it came from the New York Times. Okay, so what they they're showing a, us is what they want us to see. On no, they they're showing the actual videos from phones. Oh, that's what went viral. Right. Oh, there is two websites that I know of that actually specialize. One, it's called Cop Block, and. Uh, you have an app on your phone. If you're seeing this stuff happen in your neighborhood, you actually put this on your phone. As soon as you touch that application, it opens it up. It record allows you to start recording. As soon as you push send, it sends it to that website. So if cops try to seize your uh, phone, you already have it sent to a safe place. They might try to eradicate it, smash your phone, but they can't eradicate it from the website. Yeah, they'll tell you mm -hmm. to put it down. Yeah. Put the phone down, and then they'll act like they're gonna shoot you if you don't. Yeah. See, that's mm -hmm. a, and see, they 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 can't, and that's really ridiculous because if you got the camera. You got your hand full full of a ca camera, a phone. Likelihood of you being less, you know, a danger to them is really diminished. So I mean, cops are. I mean, I'm I'm all for filming the cops because they are public servants. This has got all such backlash. Are not bad. No, 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 no. I'm bad. not saying that. But, but do we got some that's had yeah, a bad I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what though. When you do a business with a cop, say you get a new siding put on, don't you sign a contract? You sign a contract, right? Mm -hmm. It gives you rights. It gives them rights, right? They expect to be paid for the job. You have qualifications, too, that you also sign on for. So guess what? 
that kind of thing it basically it just makes people more honest because now they ha can't really have a refuge I and mean, a, a lie they really can't that's removed so i think to filming them i think they should wear body cams i've said this for years i wish that and the technology wasn't there it is now it's very easy it's very cheap you can get a webcam a cam i mean to go on a person's clothing for less than 30 dollars okay and it's got enough memory to do record six Some or eight hours said, like the, the i think the look the guy that got killed selling the cds yeah that their body cam had fell off. Yeah. But okay. it was somebody else who was recorded. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah the, and then just like the girl with the, the the man that the young man that was killed in front of his daughter mm -hmm. and his girlfriend, she was videoing and all of it. Yeah. So it's, see, it diminishes it, and they don't like it. But and they're I, saying they got that video in dispute now because they're saying that there's another video that has not come forward yet that that explains that there was another reason beside the tail light while they were pulled over which the policeman felt endangered. Well that's like Sandra Bland. They pulled her over for a broken tail light. Give me a break. Well it's it's all about white privilege. That's what it's all about. White privilege. Yeah because the Supremacy. Got, uh, they took his gun from him. I think he was at in Texas, Houston hmm. or somewhere. The time. They took his uh, uh, oh god his gun from him, and he was saying that uh, Ku Klux Klan can walk around with their guns. guns. So it's 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 two different uh, um, mm -hmm. attitudes of how they treat white and how they treat black. But we are, our time is running short. Well, I didn't get a chance. Yeah, there were. What we can do is is finish this up. Maybe on next the time. Next program. Because I wanted to go over uh, the 23 everyday actions punishable by death if you're black in America. Well, and then you might have some more information. Yeah. Well, I, 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 oh, the, you could look it up on the web. It is definitely there. Yeah, well, we could come back next and finish mm -hmm. it because it, it is, uh, it's time to have a conversation. Especially when. It's time when, to have a conversation, not just with, well, we need it with us, but we need it with whites. We need to sit down. I just personally feel that if you're really going to make some change, protesting and walking and talking, that's cool. And it makes some change. But really, in my heart, I feel that it takes legislation. Yes. Laws to make. Mm -hmm. If you go back with Martin Luther King, that's how he got us voting rights. Well, there's Even such a... We had voting rights all along. There's such a good old boy network okay. out there. Okay, we, we got to go. Okay, you say... Sh wrap it up, wrap okay, it up. Wrap okay, up. I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to finish this conversation yeah. in our next program because it's very interesting. And it's going to be going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's been going on. Yeah, but it's going to go on mm -hmm. a little bit more. Hallelujah. Anyhow, that's our story for today for about Roscoe Brown, the Tuskegee Airman, who passed away, joined his ancestors on July 2nd, 2016. Aisha Thomas was the first adult who was to be cured of sickle cell anemia. And a part of the speech from Frederick Douglass and uh, the celebration of the 4th of July, and we're gonna continue our conversation on our next program about the same thing, bringing up to date of why, what is that question there? Why uh, 23 should everyday? black, oh, 23 everyday actions punishable by death if you're black in America. Yeah. And then right. there's, uh, all, there's seven things w worth more than a black person's life in America. There's so much out here. So much out here. It is. And we'll bring that, some more information to you on our next program, which will be the fourth Monday of this month. I think. Am I right? Okay. Well, can I leave them a question? Uh, can you tell your child whether or not to wear a hoodie? Think about it. Or don't you go in the store with your hands in your pocket? Think about it. Okay. Uh, so Torres Black History Corner Internet Program comes to you via satellite at allpointstv.com. You can watch our program every second and fourth Monday of the month unless the day falls on a holiday starting at 3.30 p.m. Also be sure to watch what's going on with political pundit Dr. George Moss every Monday at 2 p.m. Something new is happening on Comcast Channel 17. You can now begin watching All Points TV.com programs every Tuesday evening from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Be sure you tune in and watch the programs coming on that night. Was that okay? Cool. 
As always, I like to say Asante Sani, Sana, which means thank you very much in Swahili to all of you who have watched our program today. And we definitely hope that you have learned something new about our story. Until next time, as we always like to say, know that we are from a strong, we are a strong and resilient people and that no one can keep us down. Romans 8.31 says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Kind of like that one. <laughs> and I'm going to stick with it. Also, to always be true to yourself, love yourself, and embrace the beautiful skin you're in, and to always keep on keeping on with us. Amani, which means peace. Okay. Okay. Open with I know it just we must work passionately and unrelentingly for first class citizenship. For instance, if the average so called Negro, he doesn't think that he can uh, go into business and provide jobs for himself. We've got to get smart. We've got to organize. And because of this, he thinks that he can only get a job from the white man or he can only get clothes from the white man or he can only get food from the white man.